Hello guys, and welcome back to another CAFCAST! Today we are back here on our How to Build a YouTube PC series and as you can see the computer has been now successfully built which is fantastic but the fans currently haven't been configured and we're not using any sort of sound optimization at all with running certain fans. Because we're using two Y-splitter cables for the push-pull configuration we have on our radiator, those fans are running natively at about 500 RPM, whereas the single fans on the bottom and the rear of the case are running at around about 1000 because they are single pin fans currently. So what we want to do is run the five-way optimization on our system here, and I'll demonstrate that to you guys step by step. It's nice and straightforward. But essentially what we're looking at is hopefully running a nice overclock. We'll have to see what sort of overclock we get out of this processor. I don't know yet, so by the end of this video, hopefully we'll know whether we've got a decent processor or not. And when I say decent, I mean the difference between a you know 4.3, 4.5, 4.8 gigahertz overclock at relatively good temperatures. Uh, and then we'll go through the other parts of the process as well. It has some uh, DigiVRM stuff that it does, some power optimization bits and pieces, um, and obviously the fan control that I mentioned before. It will go through and actually optimize your fans individually. So this by no means is for the enthusiasts out there who have the time or knowledge to be able to do their own overclock obviously you're more than welcome to spend your time looking through the BIOS and going through your base clock and your multiplier and your voltages and different pieces like that. Uh, personally I prefer to uh, let the AI suite take care of it because it gets the limit of your processor and then dials it back a notch anyway which is what I would do myself to make sure that the reliability of my computer is the, is the, the best it possibly can be. So anyway, if we uh, head onto the system right now, we'll have a look at the software itself and we'll start running. So, as you can see, once you've installed your copy of Windows and all the associated software with your ASUS motherboard, you get presented with the uh, ASUS AI Suite, they call it the AI Suite 3, I believe they're currently using. I've been using the AI Suite for quite a while. I used it on my 4770K. I didn't have any uh, way to do any five-way optimization for overclocking needs. I just did a basic 4.3 gigahertz overclock on my 4770K. But the one thing that it did do is optimize the fans for us. Now this is running quite a similar system, but the really cool thing is that it puts it all in one. So as you can see, we have everything from the Digi Plus, the Fan Expert, the TPU, the Turbo App, uh, the EPU as well. Um, everything is in there for us and ready to go so we can just literally click one button and let the computer take care of the overclock for us. So. If we head over to the optimization panel, there's a little button in the top left hand side of the screen. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. Uh, if not, I will do some screenshots over the top of the video um, to make sure that you can see it well enough. But if we click here, it takes us through to the uh, the five-way optimization panel and gives us some options to choose. Now I'm going to go through those with you step by step so you know exactly what you're choosing to make sure that you have the best setup for your system because obviously there are different uh, things in here that maybe perhaps don't apply to you as much as perhaps somebody else who might be watching the video. So if we cover the whole lot, then everybody knows exactly what's going on. So the first thing that you can see is that we have the option for either a fast or an extreme tuning option. Essentially what that is, is the fast overclock will put in a standard overclock that most, if not all, of the uh, 5960Xs or specific processor that you're currently using uh, will be able to tap into. I believe this is around about a 4.3 or a 4.5 gigahertz. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't run it myself, but it's a standardized overclocking procedure. The same way that the 4770K, when you go into the motherboard itself, you can click one button for performance and that'll put a soft overclock into the processor of 4.3 gigahertz. The same thing is present here. If you don't want to wait for the, for the actual computer to go through the different steps one by one to find out how far your processor can go, if you're happy with just a standard overclock, you can go there with a fast tuning method and that will just give you a preset standard overclock that you can punch in, which is really useful. Uh, but for us today, we're going to be going for the extreme tuning because we want to see exactly how fast this processor can go. So we're going to select that option uh, and you have the option of doing either the ratio uh, which is the, uh, the the ratio of the uh, the base clock times multiplier, I believe, uh, and then you have the you could also if you want to you could do the the base clock only, which is the other option that you have on here. 
Um, now you can do the option of uh, of either all cores on the overclock, or you can do a per core per core overclock. Sorry, um, which is obviously essentially things like um, games that you run and stuff like that um, will usually only utilize one if not two of your cores and when you're running a system that has eight physical and eight logical cores you might not want to have the overclock running at say 4.5 gigahertz for all of your cores you might want it to go to 4.4 or 4.3 for using you know four or five or even six seven or even eight cores because essentially the more cores that are being used at the time the more heat the processor is generating so theoretically you should be able to get a slightly higher overclock on just using one or two cores than if you are running the whole thing uh, on the same frequency it will produce obviously more heat and there's a thermal limit for everything that we're doing here today so that's that uh, you also have the option to do a, uh, an advanced ratio setting, which essentially means that you can either get the processor to start from its uh, its strap, which is 3 gigahertz on the 5960X, and it varies for the different X99 processors that you might be using. But you also have the option for the ASUS optimal ratio, which will start you, I believe it starts you at around 4 gigahertz and works its way up. It essentially, it finds a, a, a common ground that everybody, it knows that everybody can run, and then it will go up from there instead of starting from the very beginning. So that's what we're going to do today because we are confident that our processor can at least run what Zeus considers to be a standardized processing overclock. So we'll do that. We also have the option to choose a specific ratio, but that's not important. The next part is the, the voltage tuning. We can, to, we can actually set the processor to have specific targets. Say, for example, we wanted to make sure that we only had a certain amount of voltage that is being drawn because we're using a lower end power, well, not lower end power supply because you wouldn't on a system like this, but a, a smaller power supply with 650 watt perhaps, uh, or if perhaps you wanted to, uh, you were specifically aiming for a certain frequency like 4 gigahertz and you want it to always be at 4 gigahertz or 4.5, then you have the option of actually dialing that in. So once it reaches those goals for you, it won't take that multiplier or that specific option any higher and it will just play with the other two options for you. The other thing that you can do which is quite useful is do a memory test which you can see just on the system here. Uh, it's it's useful because it means that you'll be able to double check that all your memory is working efficiently and for people like content creators and especially people like me who has a large amount of RAM, 32 gigabytes in this system right now which I do intend to upgrade to 64 when I move to 4K content, you have the option to test all that RAM to make sure that it is running uh, as efficiently as it possibly can, which is pretty important and also will check and make sure there's no errors. It's like a, a MEM test that you could you do back in the days of, uh, of DOS and Windows 95 and 98. So you have that option to you. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, enable that because I want to make sure that all my memory is working efficiently and working well. And it's good to find out now that I've officially built the system whether or not there's a problem with my memory because if there is, I can send the kit back uh, to the supplier and make sure that I get a, a, a one sent out that is actually going to work properly. So that's a pretty good, useful thing to do, especially when you first put your system. You also have the option of doing some advanced vector testing. Now, this is designed specifically for people who are going to be running uh, larger applications like rendering on Vegas or Premiere Pro, etc., um, for long periods of time. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, a lot of people perhaps won't be running uh, a, a processor running at 100% for four hours. Uh, they'll be running, um, you know, 70-80% uh, uh, on, on all cores, perhaps only like 100% on two cores for an hour or two playing a video game, uh, which is not going to put as much stress on the computer as an all cores, all overclocked, all running full tilt for four to five hours. Essentially what this option gives you is the ability to build in a pre-configured amount of time that the processor has to burn for to make sure that it can support the overclock that you've put into your system. So say for example you wanted to run 15 minute burn for each time, you can set that in here and make sure that the computer is happy to run whichever overclock that it finds for 15 minutes because you might find that for two hours it's able to run two cores at 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz, for example. But then as soon as you take it up to three or four cores, or even the full eight cores that are on this system, and try to do the same sort of thing, the processor may crash. So it's really important to make sure that you're running something that is stable for not only 
uh, a couple of your cores or not only for a short period of time but also for a, a long long period of time so we have that option available to us personally i just want to see exactly what our cpu can do today because i want to tell you guys exactly how fast we've been able to get this machine to go um, so i'm not going to be doing that today because it's going to be a bit longer to do um, but that option is there available for people who maybe want to do it and i might look at doing it in the future we also have the option to set up some pre-configurations for other parts of the system. So we have the uh, the option to configure our EPU, uh, which is our environmental power supply unit um, settings, and also the DigiPlus, which is uh, how you optimize the, the power that's going to some peripherals and components. Um, you can set uh, different things for that as well. Um, most of them are actually deselected right now on our system here, um, but obviously those are, are settings that are specific to you, and whether or not you are running anything like that is, uh, is entirely your choice. And the other thing that is really cool about this system as well is that when you're optimizing your fans um, and doing bits and pieces like that, you actually have the ability, if you're using an Azus motherboard with an Azus graphics card, you can configure them to be able to work together within AI Suite. So for example here, because I'm using the 780 out of my old system temporarily until a new graphics card is released and is worth the upgrade for us for in terms of frame rates and games and things, um, we have the, the, the ability to modify and use that because we have an Azus graphics card. So that option has been selected for us, which is really, really useful. So. What we're going to do is we're going to set this up to run. We're going to configure our fans, tell the computer where each of our fans are, as in the motherboard connections, chassis one, two, three, four, and the CPU fans. We're going to tell them whether they're front fans, rear fans, bottom fans, just so it can configure to the, the, the best optional uh, optimal performance. Because things like, for example, when you're running um, hard drive performance or or things that aren't necessarily related to the CPU, you want your bottom fan to be cooling the components or be directly monitored by the temperature of a, a thermometer that's perhaps closer to them. So you have the option to do that. But we're gonna run this overclock for us now and I'll come back to you guys once it's started. We can talk a little bit about what, exactly what it's doing. And then once we've done that, we can see exactly how far the overclock is able to go. So I'll see you guys in a minute. So the system has run its course and we've actually managed to get a 4.3 gigahertz overclock on all eight cores, which I am extremely happy with. That's whilst running, I decided to change the uh, configuration that we were running and we actually ended up using a 15 minute, 100% uh, core usage on the, uh, the VXM program that the system will run for you for content creators and things. So I am very confident that that is able to run fine, uh, which is really, really good. It was actually able to push through 4.4 as well. Um, and it was only on the eight core uh, option that it ended up actually uh, not being able to make it through uh, and crashed. So that, as far as I'm concerned, is a pretty good overclock. It's not the best by any means, and I know that if I wanted to, I would be able to push it even further, but to be honest with you, the more important thing for me is that the computer runs reasonably quietly whilst I'm recording, uh, and then is able to perform, hopefully, to a pretty good standard. We may end up revisiting these numbers later on, but it's also now optimizing the fans for us and sounds Really very quiet seeing as it's running right now next to me and I can hardly hear anything. So really pleased with the progress that we've made. So thank you very much for watching my guide to using the five-way optimization suite from Azus. Don't forget that uh, you can check us out by uh, visiting the YouTube channel as always, youtube.com forward slash CAFCAST. Make sure that you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. We are now starting to do a significant amount of hardware videos. We've got some really cool stuff coming up from Cooler Master, including a new mechanical keyboard uh, and mouse. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Cooler Master 652S and see how that performs while overclocked on a 4770K. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. But until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been Kaf of the CAFCast, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care. You've been watching the CAFCast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to us if you like what you see. That way I'll know to make more and that you really like me. So, you've been watching the Kefcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget. 
forget to check out all of our other videos.